Greetings viewers, voyeurs with Got That Funk. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining me. I wanted to talk a little bit about the recent uh, rash of allegations about sexual misconduct that are being hurled at a variety of different people in the public sphere and uh, the way people talk about these things on social media. Now everybody, I'm sure, watching this video will recall during the presidential campaign last year, uh, there was an Access Hollywood tape recording uh, that came out where Donald Trump was being interviewed by Billy Bush and in that interview he was bragging about how he was trying to get in the pants of a woman that he knew to be married. Later in that same interview he said that uh, he felt entitled to just grab women by the pussy. He said, I don't even wait. And he followed that up by saying, when you're a star, they let you do it. At the time that that tape became public, there were more than a dozen women accusing Donald Trump of sexual harassment. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not the type of person who says that uh, we should conduct trial by media or, you know, internet witch hunts I don't think are okay. But I'm not talking about convicting Donald Trump or anyone else for that matter of sexual misconduct in court. I'm talking about, you know, generally speaking, when there's smoke, there's fire. It's not always true, but it's more often true than not. And when you've got a multiplicity of people making very similar allegations, I think it is fair to conclude that there might be something to it. And when it comes to deciding whether or not someone is fit to hold high office, I think the, the allegations are sufficient to give one pause and possibly, probably, decide to vote for someone uh, who doesn't have the same baggage. That's just my opinion. Now, recently there have been an awful lot of uh, sexual harassment allegations towards an awful lot of famous people. And these allegations make no distinction as to whether the person in question is on the political right or the political left. Because, hey, shocker, sexual misconduct is a human problem. Sexual misconduct has virtually nothing to do with someone's political affiliations. Shocker, I know, right? I mean, who would have thought that every single group has sexual predators in it? That's, that shouldn't even be surprising. There's no such thing as a nation without sexual predators or a race without sexual predators or a political ideology without sexual predators. There's probably not even a fucking neighborhood that has no sexual predators in it. It depends, I suppose, on how you want to define sexual predators. Um, but how I would define it is simple. If you uh, touch someone in, a, in a, a way which can be perceived as uh, sexually aggressive, or uh, say something to them even that uh, can be perceived the same way, then you're probably uh, going a little too far. And uh, whether or not the behavior is criminal, it would depend on each uh, circumstance individually. You can't really blanket statement this thing uh, one way or the other. Having said that, like I say, when you've got a multiplicity of accusers uh, making very similar accusations, I think it's worth taking seriously. And that's the case with Harvey Weinstein, for example, where literally dozens of women came out and said that he, in one way or another, coerced them into uh, gratifying him sexually. And that's just is not okay. I make no distinction as to what the fact that Harvey Weinstein was a supporter of uh, Democrat politicians and so forth. As far as I'm concerned, his behavior, if true, if the accusations towards him were true, were disgusting. And it seemed to be enough for him to get blacklisted virtually in Hollywood. I mean, uh, you know, he got fired from his own company. Uh, he got kicked out of the... Um, the, the, the Academy Award uh, body and whatever. And, uh, you know, he went to get some rehab and all this kind of stuff. So there's obviously some truth to the allegations toward Harvey Weinstein. Now, recently, Senator Al Franken, who is a Democrat, uh, has been accused of uh, groping and uh, forcibly kissing someone. And, uh, you know, that's not okay either, of course. But let's, you know, keep things in perspective. That is in no way uh, in the same category as having dozens and dozens of people accuse you of coercing them into a sexual act, all right, like Harvey Weinstein. And politician, former judge Roy Moore, who is up for a uh, Senate seat in Alabama to replace the seat that was vacated by Jeff Sessions when he was uh, elevated to attorney general, is causing an awful lot of stir because Roy Moore has been accused by women who at the time were in their teens of uh, being sexually aggressive towards them. Now, what I don't understand is why people on either side of the political spectrum choose to defend people who are accused on their own side whilst at the same time pointing fingers 
at the people who are accused on the other side and saying that the other side is the problem. Now, sexual misconduct is a problem. It really doesn't matter what someone's political affiliations are. Okay, Roy Moore is accused by a couple of people now of making sexual advances when he was in his early 30s towards girls as young as 14. Now, you can mitigate as far as I'm concerned about uh, his Alabama's age of consent is 16, so the ones that he was accused of, uh, you know, being intimate with who were 17 and 18, different story, you know, you may or may not find that creepy, that's your prerogative, but it certainly isn't illegal, I suppose, in Alabama anyway, but there's no context in which it's okay for someone in their 30s to be sexually assertive towards someone who is only 14 years old. I don't care how the girl was dressed. I don't care whether she was sexually assertive herself. It's up to the adult in the situation to behave like an adult. If the young person is not behaving appropriately, the adult most certainly should. I'm not talking about convicting Roy Moore of any sexual misconduct offenses in court. I'm not talking about an internet lynch mob, but I am saying that the multiplicity of allegations and the seriousness of the nature of those allegations should be enough for anyone who really cares about moral decency in public office to decide not to vote for Roy Moore. And I find it sickening that people who say that they support things like family values and, and Christian values and stuff like that in Alabama are still considering voting for Roy Moore. How can you do that? How, how is it okay? I, I, what really blows my mind is that just because this guy says he's a Christian and says he's a Republican, that that's enough for you to look the other way and give him your vote? Please, Alabama, don't do it. If Roy Moore is elected despite these allegations, what kind of signal will that send to men everywhere and to women everywhere, including 14-year-old girls. Food for thought. I look forward to a vigorous discussion about this topic in the comments section down below. I will be on the Breakfast Club channel tomorrow with another video. And until next time, thanks for watching. May all your ups and downs be ups.